everybody. Happy Sunday evening. So I'm going to see if hopefully the comments and stuff will come through tonight. Just a minute here. Get my... I'm still having trouble with Facebook there. Um, there we go. Oh, good. The, the, the comments are coming through. They, they have changed some of the stuff and... Um, I'm still having trouble finding things in the lot what they call live producer that you have to use to do this so I'm gonna hopefully everyone is hearing me okay oh hi everybody yeah people are starting to come in so everybody had a nice day I had kind of a nice day today I just kind of took the day off I don't do that very often I sat and watched TV <laughs> I don't do that very often I like I just needed a day off I guess Mobile on yesterday, and oh, everybody's hearing me okay. So I got quite a bit done yesterday. I did laundry today, you know, all those basic things. <laughs> so it was kind of fun. I had, I watched some TV. A second here, make sure I can hear everybody. Yep. So everybody's hearing me okay. Looks like it. We'll wait a couple minutes till we get a few people on here. Take sometimes it takes a couple minutes. For for the notifications, um, or, uh, Facebook's kind of weird about the notifications sometimes too. So, oh, hi Margaret, hi Jan, hi Pat. Okay, so um, we're gonna work on this bobble. What do they call it? The bobble carry all tote. Okay, and this book is so fun. I love this purse book. And and if you don't have this purse book. Already, this is up on the on the Shield Sewing Center website. It's called the Purse Clasp Book, and you can go get this off of um, the website. It's twenty dollars, and it comes with fourteen patterns, and it has two little clasps in it. And I've already used my clasps, so they're not in my book anymore. Um, but the, it has some really cute things, and we've made several other purses out of here. Uh, we made the '50s purse, and we did. Um, a couple of the small purses out of here, some of the coin, the smaller coin type purses. Um, but I really have wanted to do um, this bigger purse, this bobble, what do they call it? The bobble carry-all tote. And when I first got the book out and started looking at this purse, I was a little intimidated because there was a lot of pieces. So here's the tote. And it was really fun. To do so it's like a tote bag with a great big coin purse in the center so and it's all connected together so this opens up this clasp is really tight so it opens up I got some paper in here just to make it poof out a little bit um, it's got a nice it's got a nice little pocket in it and a, a nice lining and um, like I said the clasp is kind of tight it's 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 tight when you go to open it up so mine's starting to loosen up after I've used it a little bit um, but when I first looked at this, I, it was kind of intimidating because there was a lot of pieces and I was like, wow, you know, I've never made any purse like this before. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go through what I did to get started first. So some of you may not have cut anything or anything. Um, and so let's go through a little bit about how to get started with this first. And then we'll go on and start sewing. So um, this is just going to be a sewing class. There's no embroidery on this one. Of course, you can embroider on it if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around this camera. Oops, second here. To my book here. So the first thing you need to do um, in the back is this big piece of paper that has all of the patterns on it. And they're all on one piece of paper, front and back. So this purse was kind of big so I couldn't um, put this in the in like the copy machine and just copy the pattern out so I could cut it up so what I did and this worked pretty well for me I had to trace it but what I traced it on was the the medium cutaway stabilizer so then I have like a nice um, you could see through it you know to trace and, um, and it's in the nice um, sturdy pattern then it's not going to rip because it's a cutaway and that seemed to work out really well for me. So I just wanted to let you know what I made my pattern out of. So I just traced it out of the, off the um, sheet with the um, 
with the cutaway, medium cutaway, okay? And make sure you put all the lines in because there's actually quite a lot of lines and stuff. And so, like I said, I was a little intimidated by this um, purse. And so um, there are several pieces. You need this piece, which is your outer tote piece. And, the, and you put that on the fold on the bottom, okay? And I'll show you these pieces here. So this is the outside of the tote. So I can hang all my pieces next to me. So you need to cut one of those and see it's on the fold down here, right? And then you also need to cut one piece of well, what they call it fusible interfacing, but I made this piece um, shape flex. I used shape flex for my fusible interfacing, okay? So one piece of striped fabric, what they used was a striped canvas. This was a, um, it's not stripe, it's kind of a hash, you know, but I found this at Joann's. I think it was, it just called outdoor fabric. So I thought this was kind of a neat fabric. And then I have one piece of shape flex on the back of this. And you, you did them on fold, so see it's folded. And then I ironed this on. So that's what you need for that outside piece. Okay, so this is going to be the outside of our tote. So once I kind of got everything looked at and figured out, like the hardest part was figuring out like all this, the interfacing and the fusible fleeces and all that stuff. So this one just needs the outside tote and then it needs a piece of the shape flex. That's what I use for the inside. Okay, so that's the outside of the tote. So I'll put that over here. And then the next piece is this inner pocket. So we are going to put a pocket in this one, and you could put two in if you wanted, one on each side, what, whichever you'd like to do. Um, and so that one is going to be, again, a piece of uh, one of coin purse fabric. Well, I made it my, my pocket white on this particular one. You can make it any color you want. Hi, Teresa. And um, then one piece of fusible interfacing again. So again, I, mine has shape flex on the back. So it's a piece of fabric with the shape flex on the back of it. Okay? So that's the pocket. And you, you also do that on the fold. So it says on the fold. Okay? So I'll put that aside. And then the next piece is the tote lining. And the tote lining, this is the piece for the tote lining. Make sure you get this line on here because we'll need this later. And the tote lining, you just cut two of your fabric, whatever you want for your lining. And the lining, of uh, this is the lining, let me show you in here. I made a couple of totes, so here's a second one. Um, the lining in here, I'm talking about this lining right here that's on the inside of the tote part. So that's what, what I'm showing you right now, okay? And you just need two pieces of fabric. There's no stabilizer on that, okay? So I'm, oh, I'm trying to find mine. Here it is. This one's going to have blue lining. So here's my lining, okay? So I just cut the two. You also cut those on the fold, it says right here. And that has no stabilizer on it. It's just a lining, okay? So there's that. That's that piece. So after I kind of looked through and just kind of read closely, then I was doing, I did okay, because I there was just a lot of pieces to this. And then this is where I was a little confused. So this piece here, um, they call it the coin purse. So this is the thing that's inside here, okay? That's all of this business in here, okay? So there's a lining, two linings, and two outsides, all right? And then you also need two pieces of fusible fleece let me get a little closer here so you can see this two pieces of fusible fleece and two pieces of the shape flex i used instead of fusible interfacing i used shape flex which is the pellon that we use on a lot of our embroidery product projects so you need four pieces of fabric so what i did with mine is i made mine i made red i have two that are red and this is going to be the outside of the tote so this is going to be this part right here okay this part right here all right and then i made two blue that are going to be my lining so they don't have to be the same color you can make them any color you want i wanted mine to be different colors so i have the lining is the dark blue and the red is going to be my outside and then you needed the two pieces of Fusible. So the fusible for the lining, this is my lining, 
The fusible for the lining is going to be the pel the the um, Pelon Shape Flex or the in what they called fusible interfacing. So this is the Shape Flex. Okay, so that goes on the lining part, and then the outside of the coin purse part, you need the two pieces of fusible fleece. So that's the the Pelon was it 987F I think is what it's what it is, and it's called um, fusible fleece. Okay, so that's a little thicker, you can see it, and it's kind of fuzzy. So that goes on the outside. So whatever you just choose for your outsides of your, your coin purse part that's inside of it, the middle of the tote, that's what you need to put that on. Okay, so hopefully that explains that. It was a little bit confusing to me because there were so many pieces and stuff, and um, so I finally figured out where all the interfacings go. Okay, so there's going to be... The, the shape flex is on the lining and the fusible fleece is on the outsides of that, okay? So does that make sense to everybody, hopefully? So that's, so there's the, all those pieces there. So there was just a lot of pieces to this. And then in the book, it talks about um, leather handles. And I just had a hard time finding handles local like no one had any purse handles like uh, Joann's used to have them and I just didn't find anything there I liked so what I ended up doing was making my own handles out of the purse fabric so we're just gonna make that's what I'm gonna teach you is I'm just gonna teach you if you wanna make your own if you wanna um, buy handles if you can find them you can sew them on um, we probably won't put the handles on this week we'll probably do it next week okay but I just made the handles then I cut my handles out of the carry tote the tote fabric all right and I just made mine and what I did is I went back and looked at the um, the 50s purse for the handles because I figured they should be about the same length because it's going to be a carry it's like a tote bag so you don't want the handles to be too long so I cut my handles so these are my handles and I cut my handles two and a half inches wide and 22 and a half inches long and that's what it called for on the 50s purse so I made them the same length and then I made I put shape flex on the back so this is my you know tote fabric with the shape flex on the back okay for the handles so we probably won't get to the handles today um, we will I'll go on to the handles if we can get there in time otherwise we'll finish those next week okay but you can also use pre-made handles like leather handles if you want Oh, cool. So Lisa said she has somebody that can make handles. Yeah, it was really hard to find handles. I mean, that was not something they used to always carry them at Joann's and stuff, and they just don't carry them. In fact, I asked and they said the same thing, that they just aren't carrying them anymore. So they had a couple on clearance, but I didn't care for the ones I could find. So I just decided to make my own and it's easy to make them. So whichever you prefer. All right. Okay. So um, after I got all of these, so the biggest thing about this is, you know, you got to get all these pattern pieces traced and, and everything. And I did that on the medium cutaway. Get all your pieces cut out and all your, your interfacing or um, shape flex and all your fleeces cut out. So it takes a little while to cut this out because it's got a little, lot of pieces. Um, and then the other thing in the book, after I kind of got the ha looking through things, I realized, oh, um, the seam allowance is going to be three eighths of an inch instead of um, a quarter and a quarter of an inch. So um, it's going to be it's easy to do a three eighths inch seam. So um, what we're going to do is set that up first, so we're ready to sew. I'm going to get these out of the way. Oh, and then of course you'll need the. Um, the uh, clasp and this is this clasp is also on the website it's the the ZW 6080 bobble carryall tote clasp and because um, that one didn't come with them with the uh, book so I have these on the website too they are on order but they should be here I would say Tuesday or Wednesday I ran out and then I've, I've got some more coming in can you put the name of and website of phone number oh Carolyn, you mean for the handles? You mean for the handles? Yeah, Lisa, can maybe you can text me those things and I'll I'll try to put them up for you. Okay. 
All right, so this is the then this is the clasp, and we'll be putting this in next week. Okay, so that's that big round clasp. I think it runs around twenty dollars. So, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our machine to do a three eighths inch seam, and it's actually really easy. Um, you're going to use the straight stitch. You're going to set up the straight stitch in the center. So I usually use 103 or 104. Either one will, is fine. And that's the straight stitch with the needle in the center position. I have my length at 2.5. I pull this down a little bit. You can see it. 2.5 down here. Okay. And then to make a 3 8 inch seam, you're going to leave your needle in the center and we're going to run the fabric I'll get this a little closer to my needle so you can see it um, you're going to run your fabric right along the edge then of the foot so in other words we're not using that you know that piecing stitch we often use and run the fabric along the edge the, the needles moved over to the center a couple of millimeters so that is going to be a 3 8 inch seam instead of a, a quarter inch seam okay so I've got the needle in the center and I'm going to run the fabric along the edge of my foot for that 3 8 inch seam okay so any questions so far about the cutting does everybody understand what I did how I got my pattern and everything and what type of fabric you use um, like the outside you want to use like a canvas I think they used a canvas I use this outdoor they called it outdoor fabric from Joann's I thought it was kind of nice um, so it's a heavier fabric that maybe is maybe slightly waterproof so like this outdoor fabric is going to have some you know it's going to handle the the dampness and the rain a little bit because it's got it's it's outdoor fabric is what I bought so I kind of liked it all right okay so we're going to start sewing this I'm trying to not step on my cords here. Uh, the first step that we're going to do, now the first little thing they do over here is they talk about some sort of a fusible, like um, they use some sort of label or something. I didn't put a label on mine. So you can do that if you'd like. It's, it's over here on page 46. It talks about this little label. I'm not putting a label on mine. So what, what I'm going to do is I have then, we're going to start with the outside of the tote got to find my tote where to go got lots of pieces here so once they start going away it's easier to find okay so on the outside of the tote I have already adhered my shape flex okay so here's the shape flex on the back of this and here's the fold at the bottom so all we have to do is we're going to turn this right sides together and we're going to sew along the two sides so from here to here, okay, and here to here. And we're going to leave these squares open at the bottom because we're going to box the bottom. So I'm just going to put a couple pins in here so this won't scoot on me. And you can use um, clover clips too. I just happen to have my pins here, so I usually use pins when I do these kind of sewing projects. We'll do that first. Each side. So we're going to do the two straight sides on the sides these pinned all right again we're going to do our 3 8 inch seam and I'm also using I recommend using a polyester thread because it's going to be stronger than a cotton thread and um in a second here I'm going to get this a little closer and out of my way of my arm here okay and I am going to do a back tack at the beginning so I want to start on my fabric I'm going to drop my needle I'm going to go forward a few stitches go back and I'm running it right along the edge of my foot so we're going to do these two side seams and I did forget to get one thing out so I'll have to go get it. I'm going to do my back tack here too and then we'll do the other side and I did forget to get one thing out that I wanted to show you so got this long string here let's get rid of that so I'll grab it before I start ironing all right so we're gonna do this one same thing I'm gonna start right on the fabric drop my needle go forward do the back tack go up 
to the other end and then we'll do the back tack at the end as well. And like I said, I like to use a um, Mettler. This is the Mettler polyester thread. It's really strong, smooth thread, runs through your machine real well, and it's great for bags and stuff. All right, so there's my two side seams. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to press these open. And this is where I need to grab my little thing I forgot to grab. to show you this I got this for making purses since we've been making quite a few purses this is the dime um, totally tubular pressing station so you can see it's got and there's actually a skinnier a little skinnier little top thing too these things pull out here you know you can you can take these on and off and then there's a there's a this wider one and then there's this little kind of medium one and then there's a skinny one also and I'm going to use the medium one because it's it's a good size for me but what's cool about this is when I go to iron those seams you know with it being kind of tubular it's always hard to get those ironed right to get them flat so I'm going to pull this over here I'm going to just put my camera up this way so you can kind of see what I'm doing back here here's my iron and hopefully my iron is hot and what's cool is I can put this over this little wood thing and then you can iron on here and get those seams flat. It's sort of like a seam. My grandma always had um, a seam roll that she made out of magazines. And um, it worked really, really cool. I don't think my iron's hot though. I tried to get it to stay on and I don't think it's hot. Just a second here. Give me a second here. I don't think it's hot. We may do one more scene before we iron. They have a, this iron has an auto off thing. And I was trying to keep it on, but I don't think the iron's actually heating up now. So I'm having issues with irons today. So we're going to iron these. But see, I have it over my little, my little, and here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press these open. I may have to do them here in a minute once this heats up, because it is heating now. And then I would put this side over the little tubular. And I have these in the store. They are really neat. And I, I didn't realize how much I missed having a sleeve roll until I got this, because I used to always have a sleeve roll. My grandma made them with magazines. She'd roll up a magazine and cover it with like a heavy fabric. And I had one, and I, I have no idea what happened to my sleeve roll. Okay, so my, like I said, my iron's not warmed up, so it's not very flat, but it will be here in a minute. So you're going to open these up on that, my, my tubular station there. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure I know where the bottom center is down here. The next step is going to be we're going to box these corners because this is the outside of the bag. So I'm just going to kind of put a finger press in there so I know where the center is down here. And I'm going to take my side seam, bring it to that place where I pressed. And if you can't see it, you know, just put your put a pin in there so you can see it. I'm going to knock my scissors on the floor. And I'm going to Take my side seam that we just sewed, and I'm going to line it up. Oh, I think I've got hot, a hot iron. Let me go ahead and do this real quick. It's finally hot. I tried something new on my iron, and it didn't seem to work for me. So I need to read the directions. So there we go. Now it's going to give me steam. Okay. But I really liked this totally tubular pressing station because it just is so nice when you have to make bags. Okay. Now we can do our side seams. Okay. That looks much better. So there's my side seams all pressed flat. So we'll do our box, box our corners here and get my, find my little corners again. That's the next step. 
because so once I kind of started breaking this up in the instructions, I was okay, but it was a little intimidating. <laughs> I looked at the the and I like, oh my gosh, there's all these these pattern pages, and I was like, oh golly, and all the you have to cut all these things. And once I got going on it, I was okay. All right, so we're just going to pin these and box the bottom here. Do this side. If I've got my, can't see my fold very well, so we'll put the pin in that one too. Fold this down. Get it nice and flat. And I like to put a pin on each side of the seam allowance because it holds it flat so it doesn't flip over when I'm sewing on it. Okay, then we're going to sew the box pleat in. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to start on the fabric. We're still using that 3, three eighths inch seam. I'm going to drop my needle. I'm going to go ahead and go forward, reverse back over it. Go to the other end and do the back tack on the other end. So we can box the pleats or box the bottom. Pins out of there and do the other side. Oops, I'm going to back up just a little bit more. There we go. Careful of your pin. You can go over them, but just don't go over them, like, you know, 100 miles an hour. Okay. I think I bent one when I went over it this time. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you like that? <laughs> Every now and then I'll bend one, but it didn't do anything to my machine. They're very soft. Okay. So there is our box, box bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this right side out for a minute. And then you can also do the same thing. You can take this over. I can take this over to my um, tubular um, pressing station. Or in this case, what I do usually with these is I can finger press these these uh, box bottoms in pretty well. So I'm just going to give this a good finger press with my thumb thumbnails. And then we'll set this aside because we'll need this again in a minute. So that's the outside of the tote. So after I read this, I thought, okay, well, I can do that. So we'll do the tote. That's that. So then we're going to leave this. We're going to set this aside. So here's that tote, and here's the, you know, the, sh the shape flex on the inside. We're going to set this aside. All right, got that set aside. Now the next piece, and this is on page 47 of the instructions, the next piece is going to be um, the coin purse the little coin, or not the coin purse, but the um, the pocket on the inside. So adhere fusible interfacing to the wrong side of the inner pocket and the two coin purse linings. So we use the shape flex on, this is the pocket, it's that kind of rectangular or squarish looking piece. And then we have, whoops, I gotta get that out of the way here. And then we have the linings, and my linings are gonna be blue, okay? So the first thing I need to do, follow the instructions then it says on page 21 to make the inner pocket. So we're actually going to turn back into a different purse to make the pocket. So I'm going to turn back to page 21 and it's in the around town purse and this is where they show you how to make your pocket. So we've got our fusible fleece on here and I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half and we're going to sew around the edges there's a folded edge up here we're going to sew around the edges leave about i left about oh about two and two and a half or so inches in the middle here because we need to turn this right side out so we're just going to sew around the edges of this pocket so i'm going to start up here i might put a couple pins in here 
so that it doesn't scoot around on me. And then if I put pins down here, I usually remember to leave the opening. Otherwise, I just keep sewing. So let me do that. We'll put those down here so I won't st I'll stop. So I'm going to leave maybe about three inches or so at the bottom. Okay. So we're going to start up here. And I've still got my 3 8 inch seam. And I think it said, did it say a seam allowance on this one? I don't think it did. So I just stayed with my 3 8 I know. Okay. I'm going to go down. I'm going to reverse stitch over there. Down to the bottom. Making sure there's no questions. So make sure you type your questions if you have some. I'm going to turn the corner here. Oops. Looks like I need one more stitch. There we go. And I've got my pivot feature on so that, see how the needle went down and my foot went up? So that is this little button right here on my machine. And it looks like this on everybody, most everybody, a lot of people have this. So this little button right here. It's so nice when you're doing stuff like this. Okay. So then I'm going to go up here to this pin. That's where I want to stop. And we'll do a back tack there too. Okay. And cut off. And then we're, then we're going to skip that little three inches and go up here. This was really fun once I got over being intimid intimidated by it. <laughs> the, at the first week I was looking at this and I kept looking at the pattern, looking at the pattern like, oh gosh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. And after I got going on it, I was fine. It just seemed like a lot of instructions and stuff. Okay. So we did, went around the pocket. And then it says to um, turn each pocket, the, the pocket right side out through the opening. So we're going to do that. Hopefully my iron is still hot over here. And I like to do my grandma's little trick with the corners because I'm going to take my first finger and put it up into the corner here. So that when I turn this, it's going to be a nice flat corner. It's a little bulky, so I like it to be flat. So I'm going to turn it. And then I'm going to do the other side because the top corners will be fine. It's just this bottom one. I want to make sure it looks pretty flat. So I'm going to put my finger up into the corner, pull the seam allowances down and make a corner and then push it through. Hold it real tight and push it through. And then I'm going to grab my little um, point turner, you know, my Floriani point turner. These are up there on the website too. And whoops. Let's do this one too. This end here, there we go. And then pull this right side out. And I'll take my point turner and get both the other points going here. Okay, is there any questions so far? Everybody following along okay? This is a pretty cool purse. I really like this and it, and it was really fun once I got started. I was just It was just a little bit hard for me to get started and then once I did it was fine. All right, then it says to um, top stitch the folded edge of each pocket. This will be the pocket opening. So the top, um, and what they're talking about is the top folded edge uh, is going to be the top of the pocket. So we're going to go ahead and top stitch that now. And then when we go to put it together, the rest of it will also be top, top, top stitched. So I'm just going to finger press this opening in here. Make sure I got this. And I might go press this with my iron a little bit too. So let me get this kind of finger pressed in. So when I go to press this with my iron, it's nice and flat. Suck in here. I've got it quite down. There we go. That looks better. So I'm going to go press this with my iron. I have it right next to me now. So. Sure. Whoops, I didn't do very well on the bottom here. Just a second, let me get this. I'm having a little trouble with the bottom of it here. So it's flat. Okay. Okay. 
So here's my pocket. So we're going to top stitch. This is the folded side. We're going to top stitch along the top because we want that's going to be open so that we can put stuff in it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a top stitch and I like about an eighth of an inch. And on this foot, this is the J foot on my machine. You can see there's a little notch in the center and then there's another little notch right over towards the edge. And if you run, have your needle in the center and you run your at fabric right along the outside notch, that's a nice eighth inch and it's something easy to look at to get a nice top stitch and keep it nice and straight. So we're going to use that. To top stitch the top of this. Oops, make sure I got the right side. Yep. All right. And I am going to tie this in. I'm just going to take a stitch and tie it in so it won't come undone. Okay, and then go across the top. And I'm just running it along that outside notch. So it's about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And we'll tie off on the other end. Okay. We got that. Okay, and I'm going to trim those little ends off. And now we need to put the pocket. Is the pocket's going to go on one of the linings, which is that my blue. Turn the page here, and I have some notes. Um, one of the things they told you to do was to put, um, was to baste everything down and I had a hard time with that so let me just show you how I put the pocket on and it seemed to work for me so hopefully it'll work for you too so on my lining piece remember we had the shape flex on the back of the lining and I'm gonna just lay this up here and I have to find my pattern piece here and it's gonna tell me where to put my pat my pocket so this is how, this is what worked for me on this. So what I did is I have my pattern piece and this is the bottom of the pocket right here. So I'm going to turn this up like this and I just put a pin in here and it's a little hard to see. I might be able to use my white pencil here. might be able to see it on this. I just made a mark so I could see where the bottom of the pocket went. This should work with the pencil. Yeah, I think I can see it. And then I did the same thing with the corners so I could see where my corners were. So like here's this side of it and I want to get my corner marked right here. So this is about the corner of my, my pocket and it's real hard to see so I think I'm going to try putting a pin in there. So it's about right there. It's hard to see the chalk mark, so I think I'll just put the pin kind of in the corner like this. So I just marked a pin. And then I want to see the top corner here, so I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to pull this down so I can kind of mark that. And then I think the corner is about right in there. Whoops, got a little over a little too far. So I just kind of marked the corner. That looks pretty good. They had a lot of instructions for this pocket, and this is the hardest part for me, was putting the pocket on. Can, believe, can you believe it? So then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to mark, just turn my, my, <laughs> turn my pattern piece over and do the same thing. So I'm going to turn it up like where I did, and then I can see where the, the corner is. It's right here, so it would be right about there. Put my pin in there. I just don't have a mark. I used a marking pen on my other one, but my back or my um, my lining was a lot lighter colored, so it was very it's very hard to see the marks on this one. So we'll just use pins, okay? And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull this down, and that's where the top is. And then I got to find the corner again. So the corner's right here. So I need it to be about right there. So I just marked the corner. So I've got the top two corners and the bottom two corners where my pocket goes. 
And this pocket's going to have a little pleat in it. Okay, so let me get this thread out of here. Okay, so this pocket's going to have a little pleat. So one side of the pocket is flatter against the lining. So I don't know if you can see this in here. So this one, this side here is kind of flat against the lining, and this one has a little pleat in it so that it's a little more open so you can put something bigger in it. Okay? So this is what worked for me. So here's the opening. You know, here's that opening that we had. And we're going we're gonna, to um, top stitch that shut. You know, when we go to do this um, pocket, we're going to top stitch that shut. I still haven't got this iron very straight. In a second, let me get it straightened out a little bit more. It's kind of folded, so it might make a difference. Okay. So... And then on this pocket, I want to mark, I found this, this, these markings on here very confusing. So the way it looked in the picture is that you sew down the center here. And over here then it says stitch line. And I couldn't quite understand that. So this is how I did this. I marked this center line on my pocket with a pen. And I think it looks right to the picture. I was a little confused by the instructions. So what I did is I marked that on the top and the bottom with a pin. And I'm going to sew the pocket there. And then it, it flips over and has a little pleat at the bottom. Okay. So what I need to do first is I need to put the corners. This is the top of the purse and this is the top of the pocket and I'm going to put these on those little spots that I put the pins here. I'm going to put my corners down here and see how I did. Okay and there's going to be a little looseness here because we're going to put a little pleat in here. So I'm kind of getting these lined up. That looks pretty good and I'm just going to put a pin in here. Okay so if it Pooks up in the center, that's okay. That's my technical term, pooking. <laughs> so that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna put this pin in here. And then I'm gonna get this one lined up. See where I can see where the pin is there. I think I did okay with that. Okay, and then I'll put one in here. Okay, so there's gonna be some some play in the center here. And then I'll get this one. Looks like I did okay with this one. Okay. Now I want to sew down this center line right here. So I'm going to lay that very flat and I'm going to leave this looseness on the left hand or the, the right hand side as you're looking at it here. And I'm going to pin down and I'm going to sew this down first. So I'm going to pin where I marked that center line here and here. So hopefully I got it straight. We'll see. Check my pattern here. I'm sure I got that pretty straight. I think I did. Looks pretty good, I think. Okay. So I have those pinned straight. So this is kind of flat against my lining and then this is sticking out a little bit. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew from here to here and sew this down. And then we'll go all the way around the outside. So I think I'm going to take my marking pen and make a mark where that pin is. This one I can see the marking pen on. So I'll do that just so I can see better. I can get the pin out of there. And I've got the needle in the center. And we're going to go ahead and just sew this down to the lining. I'm going to start on the fabric. And I'm going to back tack because we want to make sure this is nice and strong. So. Make sure you back tack, and then I'm just going to go straight down to the other pin. I just found the, the pocket very confusing. This was the hardest part for me. So I just kind of made up my own way of doing the pocket, okay? So I'm going to back tack over the bottom as well, okay? And cut off. So let me hold this a little closer. So here is my sewn line down through here. Can you see it? Let me hold it up so you can see it. Okay, so I sewed from here down. 
and it's not sewn on anywhere else yet. So then, now what we have to do is get the whole pocket sewn on. And I'm going to go ahead and take this so this, there's a little there's a little bit of play in here. And according to the picture, it appeared that the pleat went this direction in the picture. So we're going to put it that direction. So it's not much of a pleat, it's just a very small pleat down here, if you can see. I'm just laying this so that it's flat then. And we'll put a couple more pins in. And we're just going to do a top stitch all the way around this pocket then. Except for the top, of course, we want to leave that open. So I'll put a couple more pins in here. So I don't know if this is really what the instructions said to do, but it seemed to work for me and I thought it turned out nice. Okay, so I think I put an extra pin in here on this side, and I might turn this one around so I don't stab myself. These pins are really sharp, and I stab myself with them all the time. These are those magic pins. They're so great for sewing, though, because they are sharp. I, I tried some older pins I had at the store. I hadn't used them for a long time, and oh my gosh, they're so dull. I'm so used to these because they're so sharp. Okay, so now we're going to just top stitch all the way around this. And I might go tell you to take, we're going to back stitch over this little, um, the little pleat down here so that it stays in nice. About an eighth of an inch away from the edge, just like we did before. So we're going to run the fabric right along that outside little notch on the foot. Okay, so I'm lining that up. I've got my needle in the center. And I'm going to drive down. And then I'm going to back up over the edge to make sure that's nice and strong up there. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom. I stab myself with the pin, so hopefully I'm not bleeding all over everything. I'm going to go down to the corner. Okay. And remember that opening's down here too. So we're going to be sewing that shut. So that'll, that, that's the other purpose of doing this top stitch. Puts the pocket on and it closes that hole. So I'm going to take this pin out now because it's kind of thick here and that's where that little pleat's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and go over that and then I'm going to back up over it just to give it a little bit of strength on the pleat. And now I'm on those that little opening so it's kind of closing that opening now. Go down to the other corner. And if you have your pivot feature on, most of you that, that have the, the bigger machines, and they've had this pivot feature on the machines for quite a while, I really like this when I'm doing this kind of sewing. And I use it for piecing also. Because then I can um, chain piece and not have to touch a bunch of buttons. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and back up over this. Do a nice back tack so that it's nice and strong at the top. Okay. And there's my pocket. So what do you think? How did I do? Cut some of these threads here. Got a couple of threads up here. Take those stabby pins out. I think I stabbed myself three times when I was sewing around that pocket. And if you wanted to put more than one pocket in, you could put one on the other side too. I just cut one. So if you want two pockets in your purse. But see, then this side is open. So it has a little bit. So like if you wanted to put your cell phone in there, it's a little thicker. And then this one's a little flatter. So, okay. So there's the pocket. So that to me was the hardest part. So now we're at the all the fun part because now it's going to look like a purse. So we're getting to the point that it's going to look like a purse now. So, okay. So we got all the little fiddly stuff done. So now we're ready to make it into a purse. So that was some of the notes I made. I, I said to stitch that center line first, and then I made the pleat and just sewed around it. Because the instructions were kind of weird to me, and I just couldn't quite understand. So that's how I did it. OK. So now we're going to go back to the regular tote tote. And it's on page 48 now. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, sew the coin purse halves together. So you're going to take one blue, like mine is the blue, this is a lining, and my red is the outside. 
and that has the fusible fleece on it, and this has the shape flex on it. So we're going to put these together, and we're going to stitch across the top. So I'm going to put some pins in here, and we're going to do this on both of these. So I'm going to get these put together, and we're going to stitch across around that curved section. Because it's basically a huge coin purse in the middle of this tote bag. Because I kept calling it the coin purse, and I'm like, what are they doing? And that's what they mean. It's like having a huge coin purse in the center of this tote bag. So I really enjoyed making this. This was lots of fun to do. Okay, so there's that one. We'll get that one pinned. Let's pin the other one, too, so we can sew them both. And we're going to do the curved edge. The next part's my favorite part. When we get this done and we start putting it together, it goes together real quick. All of a sudden, all those pieces that we had started with had, you know, we had so many pieces, all of a sudden they're just kind of all gone. <laughs> they all just kind of disappear, so. Looks like I kind of missed with my fusible fleece, so I need to trim that a little bit. Let's get that trimmed out of there just to get out of my way. Okay. Turn around here. We're still staying with that 3 8 inch seam for the whole thing. Okay, so we're going to stitch from the this little corner, this little square corner here. We're going to stitch and then up and over and then out the other side. And at the, with the 3 8 inch seam, get that pin out of my way. Again, I'm going to drop my needle. I'm going to sew forward just a little bit and I'm going to back up and then then what I want to do is I want to go forward until I have my 3 8 inch seam before I flip it. I think I did pretty well. Yep, looks pretty good. So we're going to go around the curved section. And again, I have a lining piece and the outside piece. The outside pieces have that fusible fleece on them, and the lining piece has the shape flex. So mine are blue, the lining's blue, and the outside is red. So now I'm getting down here to this little corner. We need to keep that in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go down until I have my 3H and seam. Looks pretty good. And then turn. Oops, I think I need to take one more stitch. There we go. And then turn. Get this out of my way. And then I'm going to go out the end and then back tack over it. Okay. All right, so we'll do the other side, and then we'll, we have to do a little bit of, I've got to wiggle my iron over here, otherwise it'll be off. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this one. I just love this book. It was such a fun book. It has so, and it has a couple of other purses I'd really like to do in it. There's a really cute eyeglass case in here that you use a, there's a curved frame, and it's so cute. So I think we might do that yet too. There's a, I just really like the patterns in here. They're easy. And then um, Zaka also has a whole bunch of new um, kits, and they had these, this really cute little cosmetic bag that I might do, and then they had a couple of new ones that I just saw um, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and I've got them ordered, but I haven't gotten them yet. They were pre-orders. So they're always making these cute little bags and stuff, and most of them have the clasps on them. All right, so I'm going to go down. So I have my 3 h and seam. I'm going to flip around the corner here. Go off the straight little edge here. Okay. All right. Now, what's real important when we have this curved area here, we have to we have to trim this, you know, and so and clip it so that it's eased so that when you go to flip this, it will be nice and flat. And the one place that's real important is in this little corner here. We want to make sure we clip down in that corner. Now, don't clip through your stitches. So we're going to clip through those two corners first. And I've gotten using my little um, Ginger scissors. 
And then I'm going to clip about every, oh, I don't know, three quarters of an inch, half to three quarters of an inch, all the way around, because we want to ease that round um, seam a little bit so that it lays nice and flat, because that's going to go into the clasp. So it's real important that lays nice and flat. So I'm just easing it with my scissors. Just be careful, don't cut into your stitches. Going around here like that. And we'll do the other one. I'm going to clip into that corner first because we want this to be nice and flat when we turn it. And then we have to do something with that little corner too. That's where the, the, like the hinge of the clasp is going to lay is right there. All right, and then I'm just going to ease these seams. It's sort of like putting sleeves in, you know, when you when you put sleeves in a dress or a, or a coat or something, you have to do this. Okay, whoops. See where I ended off here. There we go. So I'm going across here. Getting along around the, the curve. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I think you can. Get down here. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this right side out and make sure that the seam is nice and flat. And then I'm going to press it over here with my iron. Make sure my iron's awake over here. Okay. And I'm going to take my finger up along there. And you want to make sure that's nice and flat. Okay, and then this little piece here, see how it's going to be flat, and then it's going to have a nice crisp corner there. Okay, so we'll turn this one, let me get this one turned. Also, and those little corners have to be nice and crisp there, because we're going to, I'll show you what, why we have to do that in a second. Okay. Get these turned, and then I'm going to go ahead and press these nice and flat over here. Okay, so let me go ahead and press these. This is the inside, so this is the, the lining, and this is the outside of my, my coin purse section. Get the ironing done. You always have to iron when you're sewing, you know. Everything has to be nice and flat. So this takes me a second to get this done, so... And this is important to be nice and flat. Like I said, it goes in the clasp. So we want this to be very neat at the top. So I can kind of turn the camera so you can see what I'm doing over here. I'm just ironing this flat. You have to kind of work the seam out with your fingers. Get it nice and flat. And then that nice crisp corner, you want that nice crisp corner. That looks good. Okay, so there's one of them. I'm going to do the other one. Now all of a sudden, all the pieces just kind of go away. It was like there were so many things, like you had to have all these interfacings and all these linings and all of a sudden I was like, I didn't think I was ever going to run out of parts. <laughs> but all of a sudden, everything just kind of becomes a purse. So, all right, get this nice and flat. Sometimes I even take my point turner on, along that seam. Make sure my corner's nice and crisp. There we go. That's pretty good. Make sure this one's okay. So ironing is very important. I always take time to iron. If you don't iron when you're sewing, things just never turn out as nice. Okay. So here are our two pieces. So now it says, since we've got them right side out and we've got them pressed, we need to do a top stitch across the top of the, just the curved part, because that's where that clasp is going to go in. And we don't want all of this to be kind of loose up here. So we're going to go ahead and put a top stitch, but I'm not going to top stitch out this little 
corner. Okay, I'm just going to do the, the round part. Again, at my eighth inch. So I'm going to start right where that little corner is. And you won't really see this because it's going to be in the clasp. So we won't really see it. But it's going to hold everything together nicely when we go to put the clasp in. So I'm just going to go around the corner. I'm doing like about an eighth of an inch. You don't want it to show in your clasp, so you don't want it to be too deep. Okay, Oops, a second here. Just going around. I'm just using that little line on my foot again. I'm going to tie this off when I get the bottom. Like that. And again, like I said, I, I'm just using white thread on this whole thing. This will not show. Um, it'll be up inside the clasp, but it holds everything together so that it's it's nice and strong when we go to put the clasp on. Okay, so let's do the other side. And we're just going to do the rounded part, not the little corners. I'm going to start right in the corner. Okay. Around the edge. So I figured next time we'll probably do the straps. We'll put the straps on, make the straps, and then we will put the clasp in. Because I figured it would take us about an hour and a half to do, hour, hour and a half to talk about, you know, cutting and all that, and then just do the inside of the purse. So we'll do the rest of it next week. Okay, so I'm around there, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to tie off on the other end. Okay, let's see. I've got a long thread over here. So there's our two linings together, and this is the this is the inside of the crank purse. That's going to show. Okay. So this is the really this is the fun part. I enjoyed this part. So what you do is you're going to take we're down on page 48, and you you're going to take one of the lining pieces. Remember that's the piece that mine was blue like this. It looks like I might need to press them a little bit. This is the lining piece. And this doesn't have any stabilizer on. This is just fabric. And then we're going to put one of these coin purses on each one. And then I was like, how do they keep the bottom flat and all this? Well, now I know. So I'm, let me just press these out a little bit. So we're going to take one of these, Oop. must have something attached here yet. When I cut this, I must not have gotten, I've got a couple little corners here that are attached, so we'll just detach them. I think I cut two at the same time, there we go. All right. So we're going to go ahead and lay this out. So this is the lining, and this part is going to be in the bag in here. Okay, so this is going to show this blue lining. So we want to lay that right side up like that. And then I'm going to take one of my inside pieces, and this is the inside of the coin purse that's in the inside so you're going to be laying the red like in my case the red against this blue so i'm going to lay this on here like this and whoops i'm going to find the bottoms okay so the sides are not going to be completely equal so these you can see that the squares and the corners are but not this this is going to stick up above this part so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and line these up and pin this together here and then that's where that little corner was where that where the um, curve goes up so we're going to pin there and pin here in the center and then we're going to go on the other side and do the same thing Sure, all the little pieces are together here. There we go. Go up to the top here. 
Because when I first saw this, I'm like, how are they going to get this in there? But now, then, now it totally makes sense. Okay, so then what I want to do on the pattern, we also want to make sure this is all lining up down here. Okay, so on the pattern, i going to find my pattern piece here. Okay, um, this is that, that pattern piece, and we need to sew the, all these pieces together so that there's like a bottom. So this line right here, it says sew to tote lining along this line. So what I'm going to do is make sure these are all lined up as well at the bottom. I'll make sure this all you know, stays pretty well lined up down here. So I know I had a little trouble with this before. I'm going to have to turn it up the other way. Get everything kind of lined up. So we want our, this is our coin purse part, you know, the purse part, and this is the lining underneath. So let's get this all lined up and put a couple pins in it. Make sure this is all lined up. And then maybe put a couple pins down here too. And since I've got this dark blue, it's going to be a little hard. I'm going to see if I can use my white marker to do this, but hopefully it will. Okay, so I've got this laying flat, and I'm going to take my pattern piece, and this is the way this worked easiest for me. I took my pattern piece and got it all lined up here, and then I flipped it up where that sewing line is right here. I flipped it up like that and folded it on there, and then I took my marking pen, and you're going to sew a line through all these layers on both sides and that's what's going to hold everything together so that everything's not moving around in there. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to see this very well because of this dark fabric. I'm trying to get this dark enough so I can see it. Okay, I think I can see it. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this over and do the same thing on the other side here. Like this. Get it down, and then I'll flip it up where that line is, and then I can continue along to the other side, okay? And you're actually going to sew into, until you get to about, you know, about the three-eighths of an inch on the, the side over here and over here, okay? So we'll do this one, and then we'll mark the other one. So I'm gonna, I've got, still got my needle in the center, and I'm just going to sew, so I'm sewing all of these pieces together. And then that helps keep everything lined up when it's all in one piece. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this off and just sew across this on that line I made. And if you have a lighter fabric, it's a lot easier. Like my last one, I had a lighter colored lining and it was a lot easier to see it. I'm just going to sew across that. I'm sewing through all the layers. Okay, and then I'm just going to tie off on this end, and then we'll do the other side. Just to hold all of that together. Okay, so here's that line right here. Can you see my line of stitching right here? Okay, so there's one of them. And then let's put this aside, and we'll do the other side. So here's my lining piece. So then the next question I had was like, well, how do they get this in there? You know, it's like, how do they get this in here? Well, it's done differently than I expected it to be, but it worked just fine. So, okay, so then we're going to get these lined up. So this is the outside of my bag, and this is my lining. So we'll do the little corners here. And up to, make sure everything lines up nice. here. And remember, this this is the bag lining, so it's going to stick up, and that's fine. Like that. And then we're going to line up. Let's line up the bottom while we're going here. We'll line up the bottom just so we can get that seam in there. So we're going to do the same thing. So this side of my lining doesn't have a pocket. I thought this was so cool how this all ended up 
once I got going on it. This is so fun. Okay, and then we're going to line this up. On the side. Okay, so got that lined up. So then we're going to, this is, again, this is the inside of the bag right here. So we need to make that line again. So I'm going to get my, oh, where'd it go? Here it is. Here's my pattern piece. So I'm going to take my pattern piece again, get it all lined up, and then I'm going to flip it back on that line, and then I'm going to draw that line in so I can sew across there again. That's my pencil. And now I ordered the pencils for everybody, and whoops, I might need a new piece of lead. I think my lead's getting low here. I may have to put some pins in here. Sorry, guys. I'm not sure if it'll work or not. I have to put some pins in this one. My lead just broke and it's out, I think. So let's put some pins in. Okay. So I ordered the chalk pencils for everybody and the ones I ordered were the three colored ones. So and I so I'm going to order one of those for me. It's the same. It looks the same as this, but it's a little bit bigger round. And then it has three different colors and you just twist the barrel and then you have all the colors in one pencil instead of having to Try to find the one that you want because <laughs> I'm always looking for the color I need. So I got those for everybody. I thought they were kind of neat. All right, get this side. And I'll put the pins in here. Oops, I think I'm a little off on this one. Like this. Yeah, so it works better with the marking pen, but this will work. All right, so now I can sew across this one. So we're going to start about right in here. These machines sew really straight, so once you kind of get going, you don't have to really guide it. Well, you guys are quiet. Am I boring you tonight? Or are you just watching me sew? Okay, so we're going to go across here. Trying to aim to my pins here. I think I did pretty well with the pins. there and then I'm gonna come up I keep stabbing myself these pins are really sharp okay I'm gonna go about to about three-eighths of an inch there there we go tie off on this end yeah I've been anxious to make this this purse and then when I started working on it, I'm like oh gosh it's so many pieces but it's really, really coming together now. Okay. Then it says, so we got that in. And then it also says to sew together just the side seams, kind of like do a little basting stitch on the inside. Right here. So that you, that's just going to hold that together for us. So we don't have to have it pinned. So I'm just going to go up here to the side seams. Whoops, second here. Make sure I got that good and flat. And I'm not going to go my full seam allowance. I'm going to kind of do a, like a like a um, eighth inch top stitch just so that it won't show. It'll be in the seam, but that is just going to hold everything together for us on the sides here. So I'm just going to go down these two sides on each side, on uh, each lining, just to kind of hold it all together. Okay, let's take those pins out. Less stabbing for me. And go up this side. Oh, thanks, Lisa, for putting that up there for you. Everybody says they're just watching. Yeah, this was a fun purse. I just really enjoyed this a lot. And this is my favorite part, the part that we're getting to now, because then it, all of a sudden it just becomes a purse. It was just... it. I, I read patterns pretty well, but this one, there's something about it that it just... As soon as I got going and I kind of, you know, ticked off the steps, then it made more sense to me. Okay. There we go. So I got those done. I'll do the other side. Oops. These are stuck together here. Okay. Put that aside. I'll do this one. Okay. 
Again, I'm just going about an eighth of an inch so that it won't show my seam allowance, and it's just enough to hold everything together for me, so I can take the pins out. Okay. This is outside. Let's take these pins out before I stab myself again. This one. out of my way. All right, and I didn't really back stitch on here because this is not really the seam. It's just kind of holding it together. So. Okay, so I got that. And there's the two halves. So here's, this is the lining of the outside tote. This is the coin purse part. So this is the part you're going to see at the top of my coin purse, and this is the lining. Okay, and then Okay, so now we're ready, this is the other side, so now we're ready to sew this all together. And all of a sudden it's going to be a, it's just going to be a lining and, and a whole purse. Oh, Cindy, where the, the, the pattern is, this is on the website, it's called the Purse Class Book. And, it, and it's like $20, you get 14 patterns. Cindy asked where the pattern was. So this this is um, up on the website, and it's a wonderful. It's called it's from Zaka Workshop is the name of the company that did it. Okay, so these are my linings. Okay, and we're gonna put this together now, and it's gonna be a purse. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these. Okay, so my two linings are together, and then here's the outside of the purse. So it's kind of different the way you're going to put this. You're going to put the right sides of the linings together, all right? And then we're going to pin the side seams. And make sure that your two little pieces, you know, your little, those little corners on the inside of the coin purse match up nice. And then up here, this is the lining that's just going to be in the outside of the bag. Okay. And then we're going to go and we have to pin the bottom. So we're going to pin we're going to sew across the bottom here too. So I'm going to pin all of these layers together at the bottom. I had them kind of lined up individually, but now I got to get them all together. Like this. So you're going to see the wrong sides of that tote lining. Yeah, when I started looking at them, I'm like, what the heck? And then it, all of a sudden it made sense what they were doing. Couldn't figure out how they were putting the lining into the outside tote, but now I know. <laughs> I had to read it a couple times to make it make sense to me. Okay, so there is our bottom, and then we're going to pin the sides together here. Make sure that, that that little corner matches up nice. And the other thing I had to make sure is that I had all of the, you know, I had my pocket on the inside, not on the outside. Okay, so get those little corners matched up nice there. Can you believe it? We're almost done. All of a sudden the pieces are going away. There's not too many pieces. And we'll do the handles next time. Hopefully we can, we may have to do one more thing next time, but we'll see how we go here. Okay, so then I got it all pinned, and then we're going to sew down the sides, across the bottom, okay, and with the 3 8 inch seam. So we're going to do the back tacking up here. We're going to start at the top of this lining. Okay, and I'm going to go down, and I'll back up over the end and forward. Whoops, maybe I, if I get the pin. Sometimes the pins get in the way. There we go. Is it happy now? Maybe. Okay. 
And then we're going to do our 3 8 inch seam. And this is going to be kind of bulky down here because we're going through a lot of layers and also um, some bat, some fleece and some stabilizers. So, okay, and then we're going to back up over this and do the tacking stitch. Okay. Get these out of the way, and then we're going to flip and we're going to do the bottom. Same way, I'm doing my 3 8 inch seam. And... Okay. Out of it. Okay, tack off on the other end. Get some of those pins out of there. It looks like I must have hit another one. I throw a lot of pins away if when your foot goes over them they bend because they're so soft. Okay, and then we're going to go up this other side. Back up over the end here. There we go. And if you have the automatic height adjustment turned on on your machine, I know a lot of you have that on your machines, um, it's in the settings page, so make sure that's turned on when you're doing this because this is pretty thick and it'll go up over those bumps a lot easier. Alright, so we're going to get this one. that pin. And we'll tie off this end. Get rid of all the pins, do I? Okay, so now this is the center of our bag. So here's the inside. Okay, and here's your pocket. Now we got to box those bottoms. So we're going to do the same thing we did here. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and um, put this on my little tubular um, pressing station. I'm probably going to have to wake my iron up again. My iron is nasty. What woke up? So we're going to press these open like this, and that's all the layers then. Okay. And the bottom, and but with that tubular pressing station, it's so nice because I can slip it right through the hole here. So I'm going to flip this around so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And it's so nice because then I can get this all lined nice and flat. So I'm just going to slide this over the end here. And these work just wonderful for purses and stuff. So I don't want my iron very hot yet. This iron shuts off so quick that it makes it hard when I'm doing stuff and I need it in a hurry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn this this way so you can kind of see it's over the little tube. There we go, it's coming back on again. It's nice and flat. Here's the other side. I just love this thing though because I can slide this right on here and you can get the seam nice and flat. That part done. I'm just gonna get this part up here. This is a little bulky for ironing, so you have to kind of work at it a little bit at a time here. There we go. There. But this little, this little ironing station is really cool. You can also get mats to put on here, like um, wool ironing mats work really good. And then this, see, I can also slip it through the hole in the corners and see so I can get this laid flat too and then I get this nice and flat because now my bags will look so much nicer. It was always hard to get like the bottoms flat and stuff, you know, if you didn't have anything that you could iron over. Okay, just do it this way, get this side. 
So I'm just going to slide it right through the hole. And I'm just ironing right on the wood. They, they do make these little, um, little mats you can put over here, but they kind of slide around, so I just iron on the wood. It looks really great. Here. Like that. So that's nice and flat. Okay? So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to match up those seams. They're nice and flat now. We're going to line up those seams. It's really dark, so I have to look close. Okay? And we're going to box these corners. Get those pinned. Whoops, I just stabbed myself again. Make sure everything, you have to be a little careful with these corners here. Make sure that you catch everything. Because there, there's a lot of bulk in there and you want to make sure you catch it all. So that they're all closed. Now this is going to be the inside of the purse. Like this. Okay, and then we'll do, yep, do the other side here. I'm going to line up the, the seams. Like that. Make sure everything lines up. And we're going to pin it. They're nice and flat, so they're laying nice and flat in there. Oh, can I get on the camera? I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot to twist the camera, Cindy. Sorry. There we go. I'm just twisting the camera. Sorry. Yeah, so you can see what I did. I just matched up these seams here and here, the flat seams. Sorry, I, I didn't get the camera twisted enough. Okay, so there's my flats. I got my seat, my box bottoms. Then I'm going to sew across those at a 3 8 inch seam also. So lay this down. You want these to be nice and strong too, so we're going to put the needle down. I'm going to go over. I'm going to back up over it, and then we're going to go down the other end. Make sure all my seams are nice and flat here. So we're going through quite a bit of stuff here. Going through all that fleece and the, the shape flux and everything. And go down here. Alright, and back up over that. So we'll do the other side. pin out of there. And we'll do this side. Oops, where'd it go? Okay. Do this one. Alright, take the pin out of there. And this is on page 49. We're on page 49 in the instructions. Okay, so we got the box pleats put in. All right, so here's the whole center of the purse. So here is the inside, and you can see where we where we where we sewed along these lines down here. See how nicely it has makes the bottom nice and flat? And then and then I, I was like, well, how the heck do you put this in the purse? So this is how they put it in the purse. The first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to do this at the end, but they have you, there's a little thing about ladder stitching, and you want to, see, you know those little those little straight stitches right here? those little straight ends, those need to be s sewn together through here. And you can either do a ladder stitch, and it shows you a picture there, or a whip stitch. But these need to be sewn together right here so that they're not open. That's where that little flat place was. And that's going to be kind of where the end of the um, clasp sits. So those do need to be put together. But I'm going to do those once I get it all in the purse. So you can do it now, or you can do it afterwards and so I, I've done it both ways it doesn't matter okay so those little places do need to be whip stitched together and there's a picture on page 49 of this okay and the other side too because that's going to ho help hold that clasp nice and straight in the purse okay 
But I, when I started looking at this, I'm like, now how are they going to put this in the purse? So this is how they do it. We're going to take the lining. So this is already the, the, the direction it's going to go in the purse. And you're going to fold down, you know, your 3 8 inch around the edge of the purse here. This is the lining. So I'm just going to fold this down and kind of finger press it so I know where I'm at, okay? And I don't want to keep anybody too long, so we're, I'll do this quickly, and we may finish this next week. So you can see I'm just going to turn my lining down all the way around and finger press it. Okay. Like that. Whoops, I didn't quite get that one there. There we go. Okay, so there's my linings pressed down. And then I'm going to take my bag. So here's my bag. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bag. You want to press that down about 3 8 Now this is a little stiff, so what I did with mine is I just kind of pinned it down because it was kind of stiff. Okay, and I just turned my 3 8 inch down and kind of pinned it around the edge of the bag like this and you can press it too this doesn't press too well because <laughs> it's kind of stiff mine didn't press it didn't give me real nice um, crisp edges so I actually found it better just to pin it down and then I we're going to insert the purse here So it's like, how are they going to put this in there? But but this is they do it differently than most purses are done, you know, so that there's a seam at the top. And this one, you're just going to top stitch because of, the, of all the stuff you put inside. So it was just different. All right, so get this done down here. So I'm turning about my eighth, in, my three eighths inch down. Okay, and then we're just going to drop the purse. So what it says to do with the seams is like the bottom, you kind of want your seam of the bottom laying flat like that. And then these are going to kind of go up so that they're kind of opposite of each other. They kind of naturally do that. So I just kind of shoved it in here and it really worked just fine. So you're just going to push this in. Let me tip this down a little bit. Okay. And you want to make sure your seam allowances are together here on the sides. Like that. And so what I did is I just went ahead then and matched up my side seams. And put a couple pins in there. And then I'm going to go out keep stabbing myself and then I'm going to go around to get the other side seam here and get that one get my seams lined up like this okay and then I'm going to kind of go down into the bag and put my hand down in here and get it all laying nice and flat because it just it just goes in there real nice and flat actually. And then the next trick then is to get this lining to lay in here nice and flat. Since there's no seam, you can't like ease it in. So you kind of have to work this in so that everything lines up together. So I'm just going to pin around here. like this. So you have to kind of ease it in a little bit. Normally, you know, when we put these together, we're sewing a, a seam here and turning it right side out. And um, so when you don't do that, you got to kind of ease, ease this, this lining and this bag together and pin it together. 
that, whoop, there goes my pen. Put that in there. I'm surprised I'm not bleeding all over everything. I just keep sticking myself. All right, so there's that side. That looks pretty good. It's all pinned all around. Then I'm going to flip it over here. And we'll do this side. Make sure I got the seam allowances about even here. Let's make sure this side looks good. So what I do is I kind of go into the center of it and then make sure that it's lining up. So you don't have a big gap. Alright, get that. Looks pretty good. So we'll go over here. So I'm just lining this up, and then we're going to just top stitch across around this. And you can top stitch, like I top stitched in the white on mine, and it showed a little bit, but it it looked just fine. And you can you can do it a little more matchy if you're worried about your top stitch. Okay, let's get this one pinned. So it's, that side looks really nice. And I'll show you the the next week when we go to put the straps and stuff. We'll do those little center, um, little edges in the center. And I'll do the ladder stitch for you so you can see that. Because it'll take, I wasn't sure how long this would take. So I was hoping to get to this point in the bag and stitch around it. And then next week we'll just do the finishing. Okay. So there's that. Okay, so it's it's all the way around, and all I'm going to do is just do a, uh, another top stitch all the way around this bag. So what I did is I stuffed this down in here so I wouldn't catch anything. You know, I stuffed my center pieces down in the bag, and now you can see the lining in there. Okay, and then we'll just do a quick top stitch here. I'm going to go ahead and take my um, I'm going to take my free arm off so I can put this in the machine. Well, I left part of my cabinet off so it's easier to get down in here. Okay, and then we're just going to lay this on and then we're going to top stitch it. And I usually like to try to start like on a side seam so, you know, so you don't see where I tie in and tie off. And then I'll show you that little ladder stitch business next week. So we're going to go ahead and go around this. I'm going to tie off here. Just be careful of the pins when you're going around. But if you open up your free arm, it's a lot easier to get around this. Okay, and I'm going to do that same eighth inch. You know, I'm, I'm using the that outside line on my foot to help me stay nice and straight. Let's go back this way a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I'm just going to top stitch all the way around the bag, and it puts the whole thing together, and all of a sudden it's just a bag. It was so funny when I did this, I was like, oh my gosh, it's all together. All those pieces just suddenly were, became one. And it lays so nice and flat, so I just want to make sure you don't catch your little insides there. So I'm just top stitching. Hopefully I don't run out of bobbin thread. I think I'm going to make it, though. Okay, whoops, I don't want to catch that. On the outside edge. Oops, better get this pin pulled up a little bit. Don't like to take the pins out unless I have to because then things scoot on me. Okay, I'm on the other side, so we're about half done here. Come down this side. And I'm not the best top stitcher in the world, but I thought mine turned out okay, so. I'm just, I've never been a good top stitcher. I've tried and tried to be really straight, but it never seems like it is. That's why I try to use a, a line that I, that helps me, <laughs> like the one on the foot. So, okay. Some people are a lot straighter sewers than I am, I guess. Okay. Just about there. Just about around to the other side again. Yep, so I'll show you the little ladder stitch thing in the center and put the handles on next week. And then we'll put the clasp on. So I'm going to have three of these purses done. Alright, so we're just about back to the other side, getting to the where I started, and then we're going to tie up there. There we go. 
it, it really does, doesn't it, Lisa? It was kind of scary. I mean, the whole project just looked a little scary when I saw the instructions, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this or not. But after I got going, and all of a sudden, all of the, you know, all of the pieces made sense to me. The only thing I had a little trouble with was the pocket. And I just kind of then decided to do it in a way that it made sense to me. And I thought it turned out fine. So there's the, there it is. So let's pull this up. So this thing comes up here. Okay, and here's the, the bottoms nice and flat, see? And then there's my little pocket inside. And then this will be where you put the, and then I've just top stitched around the whole top and that just holds that little lining in there. And the only thing we have left is we have to fix those little, those little edges and we'll do that next week. And then we'll put the, the straps on and then we will do, now if you're doing leather straps, they suggest you hand sew them on, but I'm doing cloth ones, so I am gonna do it with a sewing machine, okay? But then there's, there's your bag, that's the, that's the basic bag, and then we'll do the finishing and put the clasp on. Isn't that cool? It was a really fun project, and I just really, I love the way it turns out inside. So nice and beautiful and flat inside. Got your pocket, okay? And then there's the pretty blue lining on the inside of the, the bag itself. And yeah, I just thought it was so cool how all of a sudden it just came, came a bag. Okay. So there's our tote bag. So we'll, so we'll do the finishing next week and we'll put the clasp in. So if you don't have your clasps, I got those up on the website too. And the one you need is ZW6080. Okay. So that's the one you need to order. And I think it's $20.99 on the website okay and um then this is the one i sewed another one this week too because i wanted to sew one see i did one with a white lining and it had a red pocket on it so but the the, the directions are were a little scary and and after i read through them a little bit more and i already put the handles on this one but i'm ready to put the clasp on this one too and then this one has a red lining in here so I just kind of mixed it up. I was just using up some fabrics I had. So, okay. So there's my other one. So I've got, this is the first one I made that had the like paisley. And then this has got blue stars on the lining. Okay. All right. So next week we'll do the little finishing bits on the, we'll put the straps on and we'll do the little, the little, um, uh, what I'll say, the little ladder stitch on the inside there. And then we will put the clasp on. Okay? So does anybody have any questions? Isn't that a fun project? I was just really scared when I first started it. And then after I got going, I'm like, hey, that's really cool. <laughs> so I like, I, I actually really, this has been my favorite bag so far. And it's really a nice, you know, it's just very attractive looking. Okay, so anybody have any other questions? And then we'll get together next week and we'll get get it finished up. So it, it was, Teresa, I mean, wasn't the pattern kind of scary looking? She said it was so intimidating and it was. It, 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 there was a lot of pages and <laughs> I was just like, I don't know if I can do that. And then, because I couldn't figure out how they get the lining in there. But it just all goes together really well. Isn't that neat? So anyway, okay, so next week we will finish up. And um, if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me at the store, or give me a call. And then we will be, um, then we will finish it up next week and put the, the clasp in. And the clasp actually is, is pretty easy too. Um, it looks really hard, but it goes in easier than the 50s, than the 50s purse does. Because the 50s purse clasp was kind of squared on the corners and this one's curved. So this one actually goes in pretty easy. So I don't think you'll have any trouble. Okay, so thanks for joining me and sewing along with me tonight. And I will see you next week and we will do the finishing touches. Thanks everybody. Good night.